I own over $13 million worth of real estate and I didn't use a dime of my own money to buy it. We also flipped 204 houses in 2020 and we didn't use any of our own money to do that. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the top three funding sources that we used and that you can use to never use money again, but still be able to buy a lot of real estate. Before we go into this, please hit that like button. We'd really appreciate it. There is substantially more money sitting on the sideline waiting to be invested in real estate investment deals than there are good deals. Deals are so hard to come by right now. So if you come across a good deal, you want to be able to close and close quickly. Don't let funding be the reason why you can't close on that unicorn, that great deal. When you come across those, you want to be able to move quickly and close and in turn rent it or make a lot of money flipping it. So let's go over the three ways that we have used and that you can use to do that. Hard money lenders is the first one I want to talk about. Hard money lenders are specifically created for real estate investors like you and I. The whole purpose of them is to loan money on a short-term basis to fix and flip a property to real estate investors. That is literally in all their mission statements and all their core values. That is the reason that they exist. We'll talk about bank lending here in a little bit, but banks don't want anything to do with buying a property that's distressed and funding the rehab. Banks just want to deal with fixed up properties that are rented or lived in. That creates a space, that creates a gap, that creates an opportunity for some funding source to come in and that's exactly what hard money has done over the past several years. Hard money lending companies are companies that lend money to investors like you and I to purchase a property. A lot of them will pay for 100% of the purchase and a lot of them will even pay for 100% of the rehab. So where do you find these hard money lenders? Where do you find these companies that you may or may not ever heard of? Google them. That sounds simple, but it's true. Just Google hard money lenders near me. If you're new to this space, you might not know these companies exist. And if you're in a decent sized town, over 100,000, maybe even less than 100,000 or more, there's gonna be one, if not several. There are also some national ones. And the link in the description below, I'm gonna link a national hard money lender that you can use that works in most states. That being said, I would still focus on the local ones if possible. So just Google hard money lenders near me and look them up on those local real estate investing Facebook groups I'm always talking about. Go to the group icon and look up real estate investing groups and ask for hard money lenders. There will be a lot of them on there that will will put their name in the hat. Now be careful, there are some scammers out there. You can tell that pretty quickly by doing some initial research, looking, make sure they have Google reviews, make sure they have a website. If other people are using them, ask other people who they're using and look up the reviews. It's pretty easy to find a scammer. Don't just give your information to somebody because they say they're a hard money lender. So pros of hard money lenders is they are created and they are invented and they are made for investors like you and I. Some of them will require a background check. Some of them won't. Most will, but not all do. There are hard money lenders out there that are no background check, no credit check. So you, there's a little bit of legwork that goes into that. Um, they're a company that has access to a lot of funding and moving money around. So they're gonna want to most likely know a little bit about you. So you do have to have somewhat of a background and somewhat of a credit report for most of them, but not all of them. There are some out there. And the other great thing about hard money lenders is they specifically look at your deal. They were underwrite your deal with you. So let's say you got a house under contract for $100,000 and it needs $50,000 worth of work, but it's worth $300,000. Even if your credit score is not the best, they're probably gonna fund that deal, potentially the entire purchase and the entire rehab because they're gonna have 150,000 into it and it's worth 300,000. They are well aware of a good deal when they see one and they are well aware that the risk that they investing in you and the deal is very low if there's that much spread in the deal. So that's the great thing about hard money lenders is they really heavily weight whether they were going to fund you on the power of the deal. So bring them great deals. They're probably gonna fund most if not all of it. And hard money lenders rates really vary. I would say on average, a hard money lender is gonna be anywhere from 12 to 18%. Sometimes they'll want a point or two at the beginning or back end. So it's kind of expensive, but if you're buying a good property and you're in and out in three or four months, you're paying big interest on a very, very short time frame. So if you're getting it fixed up and flipping it, it's just a short time frame. you're paying that high interest. So just take that to account when you're analyzing your deal that you're gonna have some money costs in there. And if you're doing the Burrs method, which we talk about all the time on here, you should hopefully be able to get in and out in two or three months quickly and kind of pay that higher interest on just a very short term basis. Number two, and my favorite, private money lenders. I get asked all the time where to find these private money lenders 
lenders because these are the real unicorns. These are great, great people to get to know. So more than likely, there is a private money lender in your network. You don't know about them and they don't know about you. So these private money lenders, these are usually people. Sometimes you have a relationship with them, sometimes you don't. They are very, very, very rarely your rich uncle. We kind of get that a lot. That That's kind of a false narrative. There's not that many people that have rich uncles. They might be your insurance agents or they might be your CPA. They might be your parents, boss's neighbor. They can just come from anywhere. And the reason I mentioned those three specific examples, because in the past three, four months, those are the three specific examples that have approached me about being a private money lender. They're not this person that has $10 million in the stock market and wants to give a little bit. They're usually just someone that has a little bit of extra money that knows you invest in real estate and is looking for a safe return. They've always wanted to invest in real estate, but they don't want to do the actual work. So how do they know you're investing in real estate? Because you're talking about it. You're posting it every couple of weeks on your Facebook. You're posting on your Instagram. You're doing stories about what you're doing currently. They are going to most likely see you and approach you eventually. But as you're getting started, just put it out there that you're doing deals and you're maybe looking to partner on deals. You can't go out there and say, hey, I'm looking for money. You can't just make a post on that. That is actually illegal. But if you just say you're out there looking for partners or you're, you're doing deals and you're out there active, people like that, they will see your passion and they will approach you eventually. If it takes two months or two years to find a private money lender, it is well, well, well worth it. Don't get impatient. It can take time. And if you can't find a, a private lender right away, use a hard money lender or just wholesale. You don't need money to wholesale. You can just get the property under contract and sell it. The pros of hard money lenders is they are just usually super easy to work with. You usually don't have to go through all the underwriting or background checks that some hard money lenders require. I have never seen or talked to or heard of a private money lender doing a background check. Um, they usually don't even do a credit check. They usually don't really do anything. They just believe in you in the process and their rates are usually a little bit less. They're usually eight to 12% and that's annualized. You know, not if they have it out for three months, they get 12% on that. If it's a 12% deal, they'll just get 3%, 1% a month. And usually how it works is you get a private lender on board, you'll do your first deal or two at a little bit higher interest rate, maybe that 12% ish. But then over time, they'll see that you know what you're doing, proof of concept, and then they, they will, you know, or you can help negotiate the rates down a little bit, especially if you have other private money lenders approaching you. So how do you find these private money lenders? We talked a little bit about it earlier, just getting your name out, they'll find you, but letting everybody know in your phone. If you go through your phone one time and text everybody on there that you're looking to raise some capital and um, because they're people you know, so you can say that you're looking to raise some capital and get some funding, no one says yes right away and you give up that's on you. Sorry, you, you got to put more work and effort into that. Like I said, it could take several months to find one, but it is well, well worth it. Last but not least is bank funding, okay? Banks are a great partner to have. Now, I have been told a bank is never your friend, but these banks that I work with, I kind of feel like they're my friends because they are incredible to work with. My business wouldn't be anywhere without great relationships with banks. If you're going to wholesale or fix and flip, I would definitely go option one and two, hard money and private money. You don't really need the bank. The bank is for the long-term financing. This is if you're gonna own rental properties, let's say you're putting 20% down, which not my favorite way to do it, but it's definitely an option, or you're gonna utilize the Burrs method, buying, rehabbing, rent, refinance, and scale, you need to find these local small banks. These are not your Bank of America, it's not your commerce banks. Those big banks, those national banks, even the regional ones want nothing to do with real estate investment rental properties, which is what type of deal you're going to bring these small banks. These big national banks, they take mortgages, they create mortgages, and they sell them on the secondary market to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, not to get too technical. They don't keep them in-house. They have to go through all these federal guidelines to sell them on the secondary market. So the loan that you bring them has to meet all those guidelines and investment loans usually just don't meet that. They make all their money on depository accounts and selling off the secondary market. These small local banks, First State Bank of your city, your First State Bank of your county, your bank of this county, those type of banks with five to 10 branches, they don't have billions and trillions in depository accounts. They make their money by doing deals with real estate investors, by holding the notes long term. You bring a deal to them and you explain what's going on. You get to meet them. You talk to several of them. You ask other real estate investors which banks they use. You go to those local meetups and Facebook groups and ask those people which banks they use for their rental properties. And they will give you either the loan officer at the bank or the commercial lender or maybe even, you know, the vice president or president of the bank, if it's a small enough bank, and these banks will fight over your deals. They see the value in having an $80,000 loan on a house that's worth 130 that you collect $1,200 a month rent in. They understand the value and safety in that if they believe in you and your systems and your processes and you developed a relationship with them, they know that's a great investment. That investment goes up in value. The tenants pay the note down and they believe in you to know that you are going to make that note whole every single month. Banks, all these lenders, they're worried about risk. They don't want to have to default. 
default. They don't want to have to own these rental properties or these flips or these wholesales. They just want to lend you the money on them and have you do what you do with them and then either pay them monthly or pay it off when, when you're done. They're all going to make sure that there's a limited risk exposure for them. And you do that by bringing them good deals and developing relationships. So the banks are usually a little bit harder to come by. One of the biggest cons to them is they are going to definitely want a background check and a credit check and income. They're going to want at least two years of a W-2 income. So if you don't have that, work on that and do the other two options or partner with someone that has a w-2 income and a good credit score and you bring the hard money the deals the the knowledge all that their rates are usually going to be in that 3.75 to 5 percent depending on the type of loan you do with them amortized over 20 to 25 years is usually the rate if you're going to do the long-term funding owning a rental property over the next 20 to 25 years definitely go to these small local banks and start to develop relationships with them all right so hopefully you got some knowledge out of that i'm about to tell you Maisie's joke of the day it's backed by popular demand. Before I do that, if you're still watching, hopefully you got a lot of value out of this. So make sure you subscribe. If you're not, you hit that notification bell. So you get notified when the new videos come out every Monday and Friday, and we go live every Wednesday. So if you want to interact with me and be the first to comment on the videos and interact with me on the lives and ask questions, make sure you hit that notification bells hit, you hit the like button and make sure to comment. All right. Macy's joke of the day. Why do melons have weddings? Because they can't elope. All right. See you on the next one.